class. So we talked about the documentation. Documentation means we need to write down. What do we need to write down? So we need to write down the vision statements. We need to write down a code of ethics. Okay? And we need to uh, include ethical considerations in these things. Everyday documentation. So everyday documentation is work instructions we talked about. Instructions, what do you need to do? Okay? Forms, procedures. For example, closing a sale should include rules about disclosure and non-deception. So we're, we're selling something. Let's say we're selling a real estate this time, selling the house. Right? We're a real estate agent, Budong Sam, Korea. Yeah. Right? When we ha are closing a sale, the document we use for closing a sale should talk about disclosure and non-deception. Okay? For example, I'm selling a house, but the undal doesn't work in the house. Right? Person doesn't know that the undal doesn't work because they came in the summertime. Okay? To see the house. It wasn't working. Should I tell them or don't tell them? I'm the Buddhist Budong San. They're very happy with the house and it looks like they're going to buy. The price is very good for them. Everybody's happy. I can get my commission. Right? Tell them about the undal or don't say anything. Tell them, of course, right? That's deception. So we, we have to put in some rules like this for the worker, okay? So it's very clear for them. Then it says there, right? Tell the people everything, okay? Tell the people everything about the house, even any small problems the house has, okay? Make sure to tell them. Now, the legal issue on this is a little bit unusual because it might not be illegal. If somebody doesn't ask you, is the undal working, right? Do you have to tell them legally? Right? It's not that clear sometimes, the legal area, do you understand? Uh, for example, you don't always have to tell people things legally, okay? But if they ask you directly, and you don't answer or tell a lie, then it's a, you can be in problem with the law. Do you understand? But sometimes legally, just not saying anything, people don't, it might be difficult to prove legally. You might not get the money back, right? You might go to court and the judge will say, well, did you ask them if the undal works? And you say, no. And the judge says, did you try the undal? No. Then he say, go away, right? Maybe. Do you understand the difference between law and ethics? Right? But ethically we shouldn't. <coughs> ethically we should tell them. That's the right thing to do. We should tell them that the undal doesn't work. Okay? What do you say? Undal? How do you say heating in Korea for the house? Probably my vowels are all wrong. How do you say the underground heating? Why don't you understand what I said? <laughs> What? Hmm? In English we just have five vowels. Just oh, it's all the same. Undal. What? We just have O R U. So I have to make one of these two sounds, right? But in Korea you have a lot of sounds in between. You have this sound, right? What's that? O R U. Is that O R U? Neither. Neither. Right. What about this? Is that an O or U? What about this? Is that an O or U? Hmm? What about this? What's that? I E I O or U? Which one? Hmm? I can only say these five. Alright? Do you see the problem? Learning Korean for foreigners? Foreigners can only make these sounds. <laughs> they can't make these sounds. Hmm? You have to learn. To, I have to learn to make these sounds. I try, but all the uh, you. I try, but it's not easy when I'm talking, speaking. 
Korean is the hardest language to learn in the world, according to the CIA, for English speakers. For English speakers, Korean and Chinese are the highest level of the CIA, level 6. It takes two, more than 2,000 hours of study. But, for example, learning Spanish just takes 300 hours of study. So learning Korean takes six times longer than learning Spanish for English speakers. How about Japanese? Japanese, slightly, I'm not sure, but must be slightly less than Korean and Chinese, maybe level five. Mm. Korean and Chinese are the two more difficult ones. Right. Probably in, because in Chinese they have the four different pronunciation, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> There's no Chinese too. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. What about in the Philippines? Is your language similar to Korean or Chinese? Very different from Korean? Uh, maybe Filipino is easier for English speakers to learn? Very easy. Where did Filipino come from originally? Like, Korean was linked with Chinese, right? You have Chinese characters. What about Filipino? Where did where did it come from? Uh, actually, uh, we colonized by Spanish. Mm -hmm. Spanish. So you have some Spanish influence. Spanish. Mm -hmm. So easier for English speakers. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, actually, uh, our language is half Spanish. Like the... Can you speak Spanish? <laughs> Which is better, Spanish or English? English. English. Okay, so anyway, the underground heating, I can just call. We should tell people. So that's included in the documents. Mortgage lenders, the customer's rights. So customers have rights as well when they're getting the mortgage. Okay? Uh, selecting and evaluating suppliers. What are sweatshop conditions? So I'm working for Nike, and I'm in Pakistan on a business trip to select a new supplier. Okay? So I go to one factory. There's 14-year-old children working there. Of course, it's very obvious, right? Okay, I'm not, no, no thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to another supplier. But sometimes it's not so clear, so we have to help out, right? What if the people are working 90 hours a week, and they only get paid just one dollar a day or two dollars a day, right? Very low fee. Then is that okay? Right? Some people might think yes, it's more profit for Nike, right? They work a lot, very long hours and they don't get any rest, right? They don't get any breaks. Maybe they are confused. Do you understand? It's not clear. So we make some guideline there. Uh, you know that people should at least have the break of one hour every three hours or four hours, that kind of thing. So then let's uh, discuss <coughs> some questions. So we discussed these <coughs> questions before. So number four and number five. Give three things that should be in an ethical vision statement. Give three things that should be in an ethical code of conduct. So we saw a list of different things we need to include in these documents. Okay? So just give three examples for each one. Three examples of things we should put in the vision statements and three things we should have in the ethical code of conduct.
specific document. It's an ideal. Do you understand ideal? This is our ideal. This is what we want. Very wide. Okay? And more narrow, the code of conduct. More dealing with specifically our business. Okay? So what should be included in the code of conduct? So, own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What should be included here? job function. Anything else? Commitment to promoting it. So the, co the CEO, executive commitment, right? Executive. So executive means the top, top of the company, right? Are committed to ethics. Anything else? Find out duties and obligations. We should include duties and obligations of who? Exactly. Right. Duties and obligations of the company to the stakeholders. Okay, it's specific. It's all specific to the job function. Right? An important one here is missed is common issues. Issue is a nice word for problem. Okay? I had a boss before, and actually, he said when we started working, no negative words are allowed in the office. So we had a list of words on the wall. And
and none of those words were allowed to be used in the office. So we weren't allowed to use the word problem, or difficult, or can't, okay? So it was a little bit unusual at the start, but at the end, it was quite useful. And the office had a nice atmosphere, because people didn't use the negative words like that in the office, right? What would you say if I'm your boss and I come along and I give you the list? We're all happy people, right? We're going to be happy. I'm going to put this list, and you can't say any of these words, like problem or difficult or can't. What would you think? Would you be happy to have me as a boss? Or not happy? Do you think I'm crazy? <laughs> Imagine you're working for me, right? And I tell you, you're not allowed to use any of these negative words, like difficult or problem. Or I can't do, you're not allowed to say I can't do. What would your impression of be of me as a boss? Happy or not happy? Crazy boss or nice or okay? Or? Hmm? Crazy. Crazy? Doesn't matter, I don't care. <laughs> right? I just want good performance in the company. Okay? Especially in the Western country. In Korea, the harmony is more important, right? In the Western country, they want better performance, right? So, <clears throat> I don't mind if you like me or don't like me, in, if I'm a Western boss, right? I, if you don't like me, I don't. It doesn't matter, right? Because just the company has to do a good job, okay? But I understand in Korea, it's, harmony is more important in the workplace, right? More, it's more like a family situation or family thing. So you could feel bad if you go to the Western country to work with the Western people because they don't care whether you like them or not. So that maybe they're not, don't ask about your, you or that kind of thing, right? So anyway, if I'm working as the boss again, I think I'm going to do that, right? That was the last job before I came to the university, but if I'm working as the boss again next time, I use the, that system, right? Put up a sign, maybe my workers won't be happy on the first week, they might think I'm crazy, right? But I think after a month or two months, then they start to realize, just like I did, that's good, it makes a good environment in the office, right? People are not using the negative language, like negative words. But it was very hard when I talked to the boss, you can't do something. You can't say to the boss, go up and say, oh, I can't do that. You're not allowed to say, can't. Right? So actually it was good because first, it stops me from going up to the boss all of the time complaining. Oh, I can't do this, boss. I can't do this, boss. Oh, I can't do this. What should I do? Right? First I have to think to myself and say, oh, I don't really know how to tell them that I can't do it. So it actually works. Then actually maybe I think a little bit harder and I try to solve the problem better. Right? then actually I can do in the end, right? I'm not always running up saying it's difficult or it's hard or it's a problem and that kind of thing. So just another, a word that we often use instead, just this is just good, you can see on the TV, issue equals problem. So instead of saying problem, we say issue. Issue has, doesn't have the kind of negative problem. You can say, oh, there's an issue with the project. Just means there's something we need to talk about, okay? Difficult. What can we say instead of difficult? We always see on the news these days. Politicians don't use any, politicians also usually don't use these words. What can we use instead of difficult? Any suggestion? Challenging. Challenging, yes. So, do you understand the difference between a challenge and a difficult? Which is better? It's really difficult or I can challenge myself? Challenge. Right? You can see the Vocabulary also makes a difference in people's mentality, right? If you're going to run 10 kilometers, and you say, oh, that's really difficult to run 10 kilometers, then people are starting to think, yeah, it's difficult. Maybe I won't do it, right? But if you say, oh, what a challenge. Imagine, it's a challenge. You run 10 kilometers, and then you'll feel great because you passed the challenge. Then the people might say, yes, I'm going to run 10 kilometers. I want to challenge, pass the challenge. Do you understand the difference? So you can see on the news, Barack Obama never says difficulty, he always says challenge. There's a big challenge for the world or that kind of thing, okay? 
So that's just a side point, okay? Just generally, I thought it's a good idea to use the positive language, right? Just we put in here common issues that often happen in our ethical issues that can happen, okay? In our job, our specific job. So, do you have any questions? <laughs> so, we want to change our organizational process. Um, process like system or way of doing things. So, when I was working before, I also did process mapping. Process mapping means we make a map. We use Microsoft Visio. Have you ever heard of Microsoft Visio? On Microsoft Visio, you can make a lot of shapes like this, and this, and this, and link them together, like this, okay? So we have a process, like paying an invoice. Do you understand to pay an invoice? Pay an invoice. Do you understand the invoice? Company gets the invoice, then they pay the invoice. So step one, receive the invoice, right? Then. What do we do next? Step two, we're going to check the goods. So, check everything is okay. We get the invoice, check the goods, everything is okay, right? Then, send the invoice to accounts. Send the invoice to accounts, okay? Then, accounts, maybe we'll double check. Accounts, double check with goods. Okay, then we get, they write the check, CEO signs the check, or CFO, right? CFO signs check, do you understand check? Okay, for example, if it's a big order, okay, then we send, mail the check, okay, to the company, for example. So it's a process, and they have different, and then they have different options here. Check the goods. Goods are okay, they can have a circle here. Goods okay, with a question mark. This might be a question. Circle might be a question, right? Goods okay, and then we have two different directions. Yes, no, okay? If it's yes, we follow this process. If it's no, we have to start another process, okay? Process like contacts the sender. So we can, just if we go on Google Images and, and type in process mapping, so this is called uh, BPO or business pro B BPM business process mapping. Uh, so any, when you work in the company, you may want to try and improve the processes. So consultants very often work with uh, business process mapping. They try to improve the way that we do the process. Okay, a consultant might come in and say, well, this process is not that good because we don't need to double check. Okay, so let's cut this and cut this and make the process shorter and we can save money. Okay, so that's like uh, transforming the processes. So can you see this kind of thing, right? This is a business process mapped out, way of doing something in business. Okay, here's a very complicated business process. This could be for anything. It could be for hiring new staff. It could be for paying the pension. It could be for uh, some manufacturing part of the company. So just this is the way people normally map processes. They use Microsoft Visio. It's easier for people to see the process and they map it. And then they move things around. Can we improve the process? Okay. Can we change the process? Can we make the process better? So. Uh, in the UN, they had a big project called Umoja, which is, was to change all the process in all the UN, all over the world. Because the UN in Thailand, and the UN in New York, and the UN in Switzerland, they were all had a different process for paying an invoice, right? Everyone had their own process. So they wanted to make one process for the whole company. Just find the best process for paying an invoice, and then everybody in the world, in the UN, used the same process. Okay? So they re-engineered the process. It's called process re-engineering. 
you understand engineering, like changing again, changing the process. So what we want to do with ethics is we're looking at the process and we're going to re-engineer or change the process or add something here or here in order to make more ethical. Okay? So if we are talking about paying the invoice here, we might have the problem because this person might know the person who's sending the good and they might make some agreement. I'll pay you a very high price for the goods. Okay? Too much. I'll pay you too much for the goods. Then you give me 50% and I get 50%. Okay? Do you understand? Yeah. Would you do that? You're buying some big printer, you're buying a lot of computers for your company, and you tell the guy, hey, send me the invoice for more, for $1 million more, right? You can keep 50% and I keep 50%. Would you do that? You can make a lot of money. No, right? So we have to think about how can we make the process that people are encouraged to act in the ethical way. They don't act unethically. So here, you know, when we're, or when we're ordering, we have to double check, right? Maybe the accountant checks. I check and the accountant check. Two people. If you have just two people, it makes it less likely that people can get away with doing that kind of idea, right? Of course I could tell you, hey, why don't we do this together, right? But still, two people is better than one. Okay, it's one reason also why police officers often are in partners, partnerships. So, <clears throat> we look at the process, and we try to adapt the process. So we, we document the processes, identify the stakeholder interactions. So I identify an interaction here between me and the person who sold the goods, right? That's the supplier. Supplier and company interaction, okay? And we look at the expectations and rights of these processes. So, the supplier expects to get paid on time. So, the, employer, the supplier has the right to get paid on time. So, does this process mean that the supplier is going to get paid quickly or slowly? Okay? So, slowly, it's too slow. So we need to change the process because the rights of our stakeholder, okay? Supplier has the right to quick payment. So change the system and make a quicker payment for our supplier. Then we should conduct gap analysis. Uh, gap analysis means what do we want versus the real situation and what's the difference? So we might say that we want, uh, let's say, integrity, okay? But, uh, we have our uh, workers who's doing some bribery. We found 10 cases last year. So, we say, hold on a second, our company's value is integrity or honesty, right? This is our company's value. And this is what we want to promote. But we had 10 cases of some kind of bribery or something last year, okay? So it's not working. So we have to do a gap analysis. Gap analysis is, why is there a difference? This is the theory. This is the practice, right? So why is there such a big difference between theory and practice? So then we, we, in order to do the gap analysis, a good way to do that is five W's. Or sorry, five Y's. We ask why five times, and we can often get to the answer. Okay? So why did they accept the bribe? They want to get more money to buy a new car, okay? But why were they able to accept the bribe? Oh, because there was nobody checking them, okay? There was nobody checking them. Then why was there nobody checking them? Because we don't have that system. Why don't we have that system of checking? Because the CEO never made that system. Why did the CEO never make that system? Because 
The CEO is new and doesn't know about our values that well. Okay? Not that familiar. Okay? So then we get back, if we ask five whys, we can get back to the source of the problem. Okay? The CEO makes the system and then we make the checking on the person who's got, going to do the bribery and then we improve. Do you understand the idea of gap analysis? Gap analysis, the difference between theory, iron, practice, shield, jump. I'm making up Korean words. How do you say practice? Was I right? Hmm? Okay, and then we have to ask why. Why is there a difference? And we keep asking why until we get to the point where we find out what we need to do to solve the problem. Okay, so we do this regularly. When we find out there's a problem with the practice, we ask for five whys. And we get back to the end. And we change. Then, number three, prevent unethical conduct before it occurs. Checking and reducing the likelihood is preferable to increasing the means of detection. So it's like brushing your teeth, right? It's better to prevent your teeth from getting problem rather than dealing with the problem afterwards, okay? Of course, we have the punishments for people who do the wrong thing, but we want to just make sure that they uh, do it right at the start. Okay, so I think we gave the example before. We have, we can make a process diagram for anything. So let's say hiring an employee. Okay, so we have a process for hiring an employee. Okay, so we have get the CV. Okay, get the CVs. Choose CVs. Do you understand CV? Resume? How do you say CV in Korea? How do you say CV in Korea? Iroksa. Call the applicant. Make the interview. Okay, so we have a problem. Our company are hiring too many men. They're just hiring men. Okay? Not hiring any women. So make interviews. Carry out the interview, right? Choose the the successful person, right? Let's say this is very simple, there are other steps. Now, how are you going to make this process? We know that we have a problem with discrimination, okay? They're discriminating against the women. They're hiring men, mainly, and not women. So, what can we add here to this process? Discuss with your partner to change this process. We're going to add some step or something to change the process so that we don't have this problem that we're only hiring men and not hiring women. So discuss with your partner. You understand hiring? process for hiring an employee. Do you understand hiring an employee? Yeah. So this is, I just wrote just now, very simply, right? Get the CV, get the Europe source, choose the best CVs, call the applicants, carry out the interview with the people, they come to the office, and then choose the successful person. We choose this person, okay? The problem is, even though our company says in our values, non-discrimination, we're finding out that 90% of our new hires are men and 10% are women. When it should be 50-50, and just to be reasonable, it should be 60-40, 70-30, right? Maybe it might be reasonable, but 90-10 is not reasonable, okay? So what do we need to change about our processes? Yes, we want to prevent. Do you understand prevent? We want to prevent people from discriminating against women, okay?
That you came to my company, <laughs> right? We have an issue. The issue is, even though the job is not like heavy physical work or anything like that, right? It's just a normal job. But we're hiring 90% men and 10% women. Doesn't make sense. Can you help me to change my process? What should I do to change the process? Yes, we want yes, we want more reasonable proportions. So what how my point is not even what should we 